Welcome back to Force Education, this is Zed. Today we're going to be giving an update on CCIV or soon to be Lucid Motors. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help this channel grow, subscribe, and leave vacations on. I covered this one extensively before and you'll find my previous DDs is in the description below. I'm going to give you a good update today as well as technical analysis and where I think we're going to go from here on. So let's jump right into this one. So Lucid Air, CCIV, going to be the same thing, but um, if you've been here for a while I and you've invested in this one a little bit higher, um, it has hurt you this week a lot if you haven't sold yet. And it's a, this kind of thing where I do talk about it often, buy the rumor, sell the news. It happens so often that people forget to sell before the news hits. I did expect the news to hit on Tuesday based on a lot of reports and it did hit Tuesday. Now, here comes into question to where we go from here. What is going on? Why is there a massive sell off? Well, part of it is by the rumor sell the news and I'll explain a little bit further onto it. But uh, let's start with their investors part. So now you can actually go to www.lucidmotors.com slash investors. So the last part is now investors that's been changed a little and it has press releases. And from there you get to see uh, there has been a call regarding uh, the merger post as well. There, we got a really nice presentation. I'm very excited to go through this presentation bit by bit. But before doing so, I want to cover a couple of things here. Institutional buyers, they've been crazy about this jp morgan around 2.5 million but take a look at the prices they're buying it at they're buying it at 10 bucks i believe some of them was 15 bucks and it's part of that pipe investments as well right um you get to see as well on the 16th we have two institutional buyers institutional have been loading on it but again they get it at a massive discount so they can just easily sell later on at a massive price some of them as well including for some investments are locked all the way to september uh some of them for six months or whatever but still 10 bucks for cciv or lucid motors that might be really massive but comes to the question to well what are other uh secs i did expect to see perhaps a 425b merger propositions that go really in depth about what's going to happen uh the number of shares but again that is not really there yet. So for this one here, this actual SEC filing, and if you go to fintel.io, one of my favorite websites to access SEC filings, CCIV, you'll find a bunch of them. This one here is actually a copy from the transcript for the investor presentation, which I'll go through. And there's actually, this is another one as well. Uh, and this is, uh, this is actually an interview with Yahoo Finance, the transcript to that. Um, and basically all their SEC filings have been really around a statement saying that they are going to go public, uh, Lucid Motors with CCIV, and that the expected transaction close date to be in the second quarter of 2021. Uh, they continue to be as transparent as possible. Uh, it is important to emphasize that this is only made possible to their hard work, etc., etc. And then the rest has been just uh, interviews over interviews. Although, before moving on towards the presentation, I do want to cover one of them mainly. Now, this one here, um, of course, I do think that you should read each one of them. But while reading and skimming, I found one, one of them to be really interesting. Now, this one was actually the one... Uh, well, not this one here. Uh, it's this one exactly. There we go. Uh, the one with Bloomberg te Television. And they asked him, uh, you, you've said before that for Lucid Airs, you'd start delivering this spring. What's behind that delay? And here's the response. Well, I mean, I was pushing like crazy for spring and we met with Churchill team. Uh, Alan or Alan drove the car and loved it. The very first car off the production line. We had a meeting off minds with Alan and all his experience from Boeing with Michael Klein and myself, Klein with myself. We all got, uh, we got on like, sorry, we got on like a house on fire and we recognized that Peter, why are you pushing like crazy for this sort of audio coming out? Day to spring. So a little bit of the transcript is a little bit off here and there. And, but anyway, basically what they've said was they loved the car, they drove in it, and they had the question to, well, why are you rushing through this so much? You know, if the second half, if the, if the product gets delivered on the second half of the year, we're still supporting you. There will still be capital. You don't need to rush it. You know, we're making a luxury car. And, you know, when Tesla came out to the market with the Model S 10 years ago, I think a lot of slack was cut because it was the first electric car was such a fun experience. People forgave the build quality issues. The market is not going to be forgiving now. This is a very different world. We have to get things right. And the impact of COVID is not, is not to be underestimated here. And so we're chasing down a number of supplies around the world. We have 250 suppliers, 3,000 parts, and the whole infrastructure logistic operations has been affected by COVID. 
So there's a delay in the Lucid Air deliveries into the second half. This is one of the things I wanted to mention. Again, they, they said they're going to be spending in the next four years uh, a bunch of money. And they actually do mention it around here. Uh, they say they're going to be spending around $10 billion over the next four years. And they said they already had $4.5 billion from Churchill Capital's back and the pipe. And they, we extend the pipe because it was so un, uh, oversubscribed, we actually had to cut it. Uh, that gives us clear runway until 2023. We can build out phase two of the factory. Uh, that's capital intensive and the situation. Uh, basically, they're saying that they're going to be investing a lot in there. Uh, another thing is that and they take a lot of money. That's that's capital intensive because we're investing in a vertically integrated company. Uh, the other, for literally, they're trying to go on for another Tesla. Tesla is attempting to be vertically integrated. What does vertically integrated mean? You have horizontal integrated, which basically buying or acquiring companies off similar uh, operations. And vertically inter integrated means that, let's say you buy the mine, you buy the, uh, the battery company, you uh, and you're working, in, for instance, for an EV comfort for EV productions, and you basically can try to control from the first step, raw materials, all the way to product services. Um, and that comes out, and then I think one of the th one of the next things is uh, the amount of money the deep pockets, uh, uh, the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia has for the primary investor. They're in for the long term. They're very supportive, etc., and they have a lot of financing from there. So that kind of gives you a bit of perspective on what's been discussed in some of these interviews. So you see, there is good information there. I do recommend that you do go ahead and read them or watch them. They're really important. Sometimes you know things slip up, but anyway. Moving on towards this really exciting presentation. Um, and we're going to go on towards just uh, actually the next part right on here. So the presenter, CEO, this is one, this guy works with Tesla's and Jaguar automotive industry experience for 30 years. And the reason I just highlighted this, I'll show you in a second, in a second bit. Deliveries are in the second half of 2021. 20, uh, uh, it's on track. Well, not technically it's on track on the delayed part, but it is on track to be delivered in by the second half of 2021. Next, their value proposition is pioneers in equity vehicles, experienced steel maker, strong sourcing capability capabilities, value creation playbook, proven management departments, and track record of success. Moving on. This is from Churchill Capital, by the way. Um, and then next, Lucid, a leader in EV technology, defines a new generation of EVs, ushering in a new, uh, sorry, a new era for the automotive industry. Legitimate track record, so management team with a track record of helping bridge disruptive products to the market, including Tesla's Model S and the iPhone. Validated technology, long-term success, established in-house manufacturing, in-house sales and service networks, untapped potential and adjusted market, robust product pipelines, favorable market forces, experience partner, and attractive valuation. So the current valuation is, is less than 2% of Tesla current value. Well, I, I guess here we're talking about 2%. This is as of uh, February 19, 2021. Although we can't really talk about this current. Well, I'm not sure exactly how it reflects with the Bitcoin dipping down a little. But we're just going to skim right through that and say, okay, 2%, less than 2% is fine. Led by Peter Rawlson, former Tesla chief engineer of Model S, Lucid management team compromises of seasoned executive background in automotive EV tech. Now, what I'm saying here for the chief engineer for uh, the, the actual one behind Model S, that this is really important because think about it. You do one project one time, you learn a lot and you do some mistakes. The second time you're doing it more efficiently, you have less mistakes to do and I think that they're going to be uh, really amazing with the products. I can't, I can't wait to drive their car. Next, proven real world validation, highly differentiated performance, revolutionary uh, battery system and range, uh, dramatically innovative drivetrain and propulsion technology, completed state of the art EV manufacturing facility, and growing loyal customers. So there's around 1.4 uh, mm views of Lucid Air Global Reveal. Uh, there's around 20 million plus real world vehicles miles driven. Uh, patent fields greater than 80% off which have been issued. Uh, this is real world technology enables Lucid to offer capabilities of luxury combined with groundbreaking technology. 100% of the team using Lucid batteries in premier uh, EV racing series. Around 20 minutes to charge up up to 300 miles with 900 volts agriculture. Uh, sorry. Architect architectures. Uh, the things here are actually really bullish. I'm going to try to move on as fast as I can just because I do recognize that this is actually uh, a longer video than usual. 
And they do go ahead and mention about the, the post-luxury uh, vehicle markets or just post-luxury market in general. You see a lot of them. Uh, I like how they put the CCIV or sorry, Lucid Motors vehicles in here. But it's all about EV technology, modern. And they see themselves fitting right on there. Elegancy and modernity uh, being modern. There you go. Uh, as as com uh, compared to previously, right? There's a previous luxury. Uh, you're looking at sport luxury classic luxury tech and luxury and then tesla which is innovative but not luxury and then you're trying to go for lo uh, lucid motors which is the post luxury and I, I like that kind of experience i like their mind and the prime proposition is heart california cool under understand luxury reflection customer value sustainable effortless performance mind silicon valley tech technology to uh the uh connected Computer on wheels, race proven batteries technology, and sophisticated software. Product. So you got the Lucid Air. I covered the Lucid Air a lot. So I'm not going to dive so much in details about the, uh, the Lucid Air car vehicle, but I definitely cannot wait till I get to give a try on this one here. I'm, I'm scrolling down pictures for you all to see. Uh, introducing the glass cockpits. Lucid Air is beautifully integrated. Uh, con configurable entertainment system is a technical marvel providing a seamless connected experience that's actually interesting this entire dashboard i believe well, that, that is quite interesting and uh they're showing here their drag model and their only drag coefficient is around 0.21 that is nice uh, also they have a glass canopy uh sweeps over the cabin creating an even more extravagant sense of space Lucid Air's interior theme are crafted with colors and materials that invoke iconic california locations at various times of the day all kind of amazing uh the colors also remind me a little bit of fiskers uh the suv there a little kind of gives me that style anyway efficiency is the ultimate measure of ev technology lucid air is a clear winner high efficiency is crucial in that it provides key benefits longer range on its own faster miles per minute charging for the equivalent power charger equivalent range with a smaller and therefore lower cost battery pack you can see the vehicle range there uh, for the Lucid Airs is around 517 miles. That is based on data uh, with Air Grand Touring. And Tesla's Model S is around 412, uh, 412, 412 miles. And this is based on uh, miles per kilowatts per hour being around greater than 4.5. Now, next is Lucid Air's technology advance that has enabled long range high performance to coexist. Other EVs have either range or performance, not both. And they try to go there right on the middle lucid air redefines luxury by offering more than the mercedes-benz s class across price points so that is quite interesting there and you get to see they're more off a mercedes s versus and tesla had a baby and brought this one together and they were also working with a different platform so they have uh what they call lucid skateboard ev platform which is 100 percent in-house design underpinning lucid space concept Project Gravity. Project Gravity is their SUV. It's it, they introduced Utility 2.0, which is the maximized interior space, allowing seven passengers made possibly by Lucid min uh, min miniaturized electric drivetrain. Utilized Leap, Lucid Electric Advanced Platform. Lucid Electric Platform is designed to enable multiple vehicles. Top hats include Project Gravity. And yeah, so it's a new EV uh, SUV. Project Gravity is expected to be there by 2023, Lucid Air 2021. And then you got by 2030, they got planned sedans, planned SUVs, and other planned vehicles. I wonder if they're going to give us a nice truck. <laughs> That's probably going to be somewhere out there, right? You build a sedan, a luxury sedan. You build an SUV. You're probably going to go with uh, lower tier sedans. You're probably going to go with a truck. I mean, why not? Energy storage systems, this is for future growth opportunities extended beyond Lucid vehicles. Earlier prototypes already operating in Lucid headquarters for the energy storage system. Leverage Lucid extensive battery pack and battery management systems, BMS experience. Opportunity to, sorry, opportunity to leverage uh, Lucid vehicles, battery modules, and power electronics technologies. Positioned to address the home, commercial, and utility scale, energy, and the storage markets. Opportunity to feed economy of scale back into the car cost structure. Technology supplier. All OEM racing teams in the world's premier EV racing series are powered by Lucid battery packs and softwares. In-house technology designed for mass productions of Lucid's purpose-built manufacturing facility positions well for large-scale supply compared to other OEMs. And there's the technology. Uh, 
and I think that I've, we covered a lot of these things before. Ten more than years experience. Uh, Lucid has developed an incredibly powered dense drive terrain. This is amazing. Uh, time to charge is around 20 minutes for 300 miles. Uh, going down uh, from Lucid, sorry, from Tesla Model S, which is 15 minutes for 200 miles. So around, let's say, five more minutes for 100 more miles. And the two-way charging systems. This one is actually really nice. In-house Wonderbox Boost Charge Technology. 900 volt system. 300 kilowatts fast charging capable. Electri uh, Electrify America Partnership. And expected to be the first bi-directional system on the market. Talk about Tesla expecting, uh, you know, for people expecting Tesla to release a new battery system. I think Lucid Motors already got there. And seamlessly connect connectivity, I wish I can see 5G instead of there, but including 4G LTE and Wi-Fi, supports CarPlay, Android Auto, and Amazon Alexa integration, remote access to climate controls, charging status controls, and vehicle monitoring, Lucid ID profiles for a personalized experience based on profiles, and gives you analytics. The vehicle itself, the Lucid Air is equipped with an extensive sensor suite, high onboard computing power, and backup system for advanced autonomous driving functionality. With 32 sensors on board, the Lucid Air is expected to launch with the most comprehensive sensor suite in the market. Lucid Air is planned to launch with level 2 autonomous driving functionality and be capable of software upgrades over the air. Well, this is level 2, this is actually pretty awesome. By the collecting, by the collecting and analyzing fleet data, Lucid can continuously enhance its autonomous driving uh, features. And by delaying to the second half of 2021, you expect this vehicle to be a lot better. Lucid Micro Lens Array Lightning, a revolutionary optical technology. Um, I'm going to just try to go on to what's next important, just because we already are hitting almost 17 minutes on this video. Go to the market strategy. They have already around more than 650 million in anticipated sales. This is based on, uh, as well, pre-orders. This is amazing. Next. They're growing on Lucid uh, Motors showrooms all throughout the 2021, and their entry to Europe and the Middle East markets begins at the first half of 2022. Amazing. You have the currently opens, the ones in Newark, California, San Jose, California, Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, CA, West Palm Beach, Florida, and West Los, An Los Angeles, uh, California. Wow, they have two LAs. Okay. Under construction developments, they got in Illinois, Arizona, C, California again, a bunch of them uh, in Boston and New York in uh, Bilberry. I can't pronounce this one. Bilberry? Bilberry? I'm not sure. Bilberry. Anyway, Tyson's Corner Center in VA uh, and Gate at Manhast in New York. And there's a list on going on. And is there anything else? We got homes, batteries, battery charging systems with, partner with partnerships. Um, this is for lucid electrify america partnership compared to tesla's supercharged network uh, second mover advantage as reality capelex light solutions 900 volts second generation system compared to 400 volts first generation system uh, max of 350 kilowatts kilowatts and open source ccs combo connector which is amazing again Manufacturing. I covered a lot of manufacturing before in terms of information uh, they go on a little bit further with the lpm1 plant and a little bit off showing exactly what uh, the positions that are complete again i did go before through phase two and mentioning when it will probably be done and market opportunities and financial outlook yeah i would love to see that one between 2018 and 2026 they have a five percent cagr and expected to reach by 733 billion dollars uh, in terms of the market market itself uh, that is the estimated of the market uh, sorry the luxury car market this presents opportunity for a true luxury EV company to address an unmet needs and an, uh, revolutionize the entire market. And that's amazing there. Next, by 2030, Lucid anticipates the run rate production of greater than 500,000 units, representing 4% market share of an unanticipated 2030 TAM of 15 mm units. Again, amazing there. Lucid Air market share after launch, expected by 2022 to be... Uh, 0.6% by 2023, 0.7%, and then starts slowing down by 2026. This is the global EV market share for Lucid Airs. This is actually compared as well towards uh, Tesla Model S market share after launch. So uh, this is again the year afterwards. Next, uh, production volume revenue forecast you get to see for uh, the air 
by a SOP is 2021, you expect it to be around 20,000 for annual total deliveries in 2022. And 2023, you're expecting another 36,000 additional to 12 thousand of gravity suv and then 41 for air and 49 for a gravity in 2024 and in 2025 you're expecting around perhaps 42 and 86 for air and gravity respectively total revenue you're seeing a lot of increase there so i'm gonna leave it at that and i think in terms of their uh, ebitda they're looking to be net positive by 2024 which is a really uh massive thing to consider and the transaction overview, and this is actually really important because it gives us a perspective to how the post transaction is going to go on. CCIV cash and trust, that's 12.7. The pie proceeds around 4 to 15.3. And existing Lucid shareholders is around 72. And that's the exact breakdown afterwards. Uh, the CCIV shareholders, in terms of the number of shares, you're looking at 258. Uh, pipe shareholders, 166. And uh, existing lucid shareholders around almost 1200 coming in down to 100 percent and for users there you can look for cash to balance sheets around 27 percent of the exist from the, from the outcome of there existing lucid shareholders around 72 percent and you're looking at illustrative fees and expenses around one percent so if you would like to go ahead and check for instance how much the post uh price is going to be Take 100%, subtract it by 72, and find what the market cap, and then you will get the actual uh, current anticipated market cap for the new Lucid stock. 11.75 billion in acquisition value, that's the transaction highlights. Around 2 billion Churchill IV capital cash and trust, and 2.5 billion in pipe. And the transaction is expected to go after quarter two, and the ticker will be converted as LCID. Lucid Motors, current 2022 revenue. It is, ha well, it's expected to be uh, a little bit half than NEO, half than Fiskars, uh, and a little less than half of Teslas. But, but by 2023, it's expected to be uh, beating Fiskars, still being on par with catching up perhaps to NEO and Tesla, but it's going to be around 2.1. So significant discount to other entrants. And you're talking about attraction entry value, which is a good thing to be less there. Anyway. Moving on, you get to see here uh, what they're showing about Tesla's EV three-year forward revenues slide for 2012, and you see Lucid, Lucid Motors at 2.1x, and this is basically uh, in terms of the multipliers, so I think we've covered everything we need to know. Um, maybe here, just quickly, we get to see that their anticipated gross profits, you're looking at by 2025, maybe 2024, they're going to be net positive. So... This covers everything we need to know about the due diligence. It's been a very lengthy video, so I'm going to go ahead and discuss the technical analysis. If you haven't done so, please make sure to subscribe and leave the cations on. If you're having any audio issues, I do apologize. I'm upgrading my system in the next few days. So on the one-week perspective, of course, we don't get anything here, but the tennis and main line is at 24.98. That might be actually a really good bounce point. Just keep that in mind. On a one-day perspective... Things weren't looking good. Um, really, things fell off, and the trading action zone is between 44.55 and 32.95. It did see a bounce yesterday, and it continued to slide through today. And the 50 SMA is at 22.51. Everything is really showing that it's highly oversold. Uh, that a reversal, a negative reversal, is here. Everything is looking negative, including on the two-hour perspective, is showing a negative trend, and that is all normal. Okay, don't freak out yet. We need to look at significant support levels and uh, these kind of points moving average band it's expected to trade 4014 in the top 3649 in the middle and 3284 in the bottom stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both expected to really continue to dive down uh, and things are looking really rough for this one now towards fibonacci retracements the next fibonacci retracement support is at 2291 and then 10 bucks significant resistances 3093 3740 4388 5310 and 64.85 and then next right on to here we get to observe that this was the channel that i drew before and it did jump right ahead of top of that and i did mention to be careful because it will follow again once more within this channel um, and it did and since we're below the channel we need to start looking at uh, significant supports and basic based on price line actions the current support is sitting at 28.86 i'm not sure if it actually killed it after hours let's take a quick look you do one month, two hours, it is below there in the after hours. 
so we can actually go ahead and do on an hour section so the current resistance would be somewhere i would say at the 29.25 following there you're looking at a very strong resistance of 31.28 below above there 35 bucks 39.86 50 39 53.45 and 57.88 significant supports you're looking at a very strong one at 2809 it's still above there it did pierce just a tad earlier today below there you're looking at 24 75 and then 20 bucks and then we even go further down you're looking perhaps at 1743 and 1502 followed by 1296 so this kind of comes in a little bit of uh an interesting situation where you buy the rumors sell the news um, as well as usually SPACs do drop around merger date, but this one has not been a normal SPAC. We've seen a massive runoff based on rumors, which a lot of people have benefited if you bought in this section where I did mention it earlier, around 20 bucks. Comes to the question to where do I think it's going to hit? Well, it's everyone, it's anyone's guess at this point. A really strong support sits at around, I would say, well, there was a really strong support at the 29, 20, 92. Now it's a very strong resistance. The next one, you're probably looking at 20 bucks. You see, this is where this was the previous uh, strong support. Now, do I think it's going to hit there? I don't think, may, well, it could be a possibility. If it does hit 20 bucks, I might go ahead and go ahead and just buy, start get a starter again. I did sell my position a long time ago, but... It comes a little bit odd in terms of, well, where do you see it in the next 10 years? Remember, it could be another another uh, story stock where it becomes in like Tesla. But imagine that EV bubble popping, then it becomes a horrible investment. But generally speaking, within 10 years, I definitely think this is going to be in the hundreds. But it is a little bit tough right now if you're trading it to try to literally time the market. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like it. Have a wonderful day.